Right, so that leaves us with the two shoulders of lamb. Now one of these shoulders, we're just going to do as a traditional shoulder. So that is going to be for a slow roast. So all I'm going to do with that, we remove the point of the knuckle. That's purely so it fits in the roasting pot. And you have a little bit of the outer edge of the neck from when it was slaughtered. You remove that as well. That leaves you with a shoulder of lamb on the bone, slowly roast, shredded, absolutely gorgeous. As a butcher, this is one of my favourite cuts, personally. The second shoulder, what we're going to do with this is bone and roll it. So, what we've got is we've got the three bones. We've got the four leg front two bones, or the arm bones. So you've got your forearm, you've got your upper arm, and then you've got your blade bone, or your shoulder bone. Now, this is something butchers learn. You come in, and what you're doing is you're aiming for the ball and socket joint there which is the top of the blade. Once you've reached that, you're going to push your knife down and you're going to come down the top of the blade bone. Now it's important you find that blade bone because if you don't, what happens is you leave meat on the bone. And you, if you leave meat on the bone, it's going to cost you money. So as I open him up, you can now see the whole of the shoulder blade there. Now you're going to come down one side to loosen it, like so, and you're going to come down the other side. Now, the shoulder blade is a ball and socket joint, so you're going to put your knife through that ball and socket joint, and you're going to release and loosen the top end of it. Now, there's a little hook on the shoulder blade, so what you've got to do is come down one side and loosen all the meat, then lift and come down the other side and loosen all the meat from the other side. And you just work your knife along the edge so you loosen. And see there, I lift up, so the blade is there, I've come down both sides, I lift up and I see I can pull it. So you pull it on that seam. And by pulling on that seam, you leave the meat on the shoulder, not on the bone. Nice and clean on that awkward side. We're then going to remove the further two bones. So I come down each side, loosening the bone. And once again, I allow the meat to do the work. I'm moving the meat round. I'm not moving round the shoulder. The shoulder's moving to accommodate my cutting. And you come down the back and you're left with that joint there and you just take that out as a double bone, like so. That leaves the boneless shoulder. Now what you always do when you do a boneless shoulder, you just run your hands down the inside in case you've left any hard cartilage or any bit of bone in there. Just run it down the middle, make sure you haven't left any bone. Then you've got a few tendons at the end of the bone there. So those tendons, all we do is just remove them because they're gonna eat tough if they're left in there. So you remove them, just pop them in with your bones. It can be rendered down to do your stock or you, but you don't want them left in the shoulder. Now, I've got a lovely boneless shoulder here now. So we've got options. We can roll it just as it is, or you've got it lovely and open you can stuff that. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do what I call a shoulder log. So instead of rolling like a leg of lamb, which I will tuck in and give you that nice rectangular shape, what I'm going to do here is open this shoulder up further, like so, remove that little bit of fat, like so. So I've now got a rectangular shoulder, right? I'm going to score him. and back the other way, right? Now the reason I score this shoulder, if you can imagine your hands, put them together like that, someone grabs your wrists, your hands will come apart. 
don't take a strong person to pull your hands apart. If you score them, when it's rolled, you interlock it. Someone grab your wrist, your hands won't come apart. It's locked in. Similar process happening here. Now, because I've done that, I can now put a lovely fast or stuffing mix. I'll make a nice minced lamb, nice mixture of Italian herbs in there, a little bit of oil. And then once that's laid in the inside, I then roll it. And I roll it to make a lovely rectangular shape. Now, once I've got that, right, and that will have a stuffing mix in, I'm going to tie this up like my leg of lamb. But what I've got here is a smaller diameter. So if you're doing a banquet or an event or a, a restaurant meal, you can slice them, beautiful disc, nice bit of stuffing fast down the middle, but get a better yield out of it. You can cook it evenly and waste very little. So... What we're going to do first is put my guide string lengthways. So I've come round, this is going to be loose, it's not going to be tight, but I'm going to go round the back, over the top, through the hole. I am then, tie a little knot in the end there, like so, and then pull that string down so the slit knot slides to the end, and just so it covers it, no tighter. And then I'm going to start tying up. So what I do first of all, because it's fairly even, I'm going to divide it up into sections. So I'll go about a quarter of the way in. I'll go about half the way in. And where it's thinner, I tie it looser. Where it's thicker, I tie it tighter. And then I go three quarters of the way in. I then half the middle ones. And the reason I go to the middle now because I want to push that slightly fatter area out towards the ends. And once again, in the middle. And then at either end. And it starts taking that little shape starting to look like a salami stick. But what it's doing is giving you a nice even roasting and even slicing piece of meat. So there, and then once I've got to there, I'm literally going to tie between every single set of strings there. So once again, I'm round the back, over the top, through the hole. Tie a little knot. Slide it down. There we go, round the back, over the top, through the hole. Tie a knot. And we'll just do one more. So we've gone round the back, over the top, through the hole, tie a knot. How easy is that? There we go. And we end up with that rectangular shoulder lamb. Doesn't look like a shoulder lamb now. We'll eat fantastic. Nice, even cooking roasting.